Now, as part of my crazy plan to make a stamp, um, I made a mold and I tried brass and I didn't like the way it turned out. So this time I'm going to try bronze. So I've been melting some copper from some copper uh, soft tubing that I had. So I've got these ingots, about almost five pounds of copper each on uh, these. Uh, this, of course, is a smaller one. And I want to make some bronze to see if I can cast something that comes out a little bit better from bronze. So, I need 12% tin, which oh, I've got some little tin cut pieces here, to 88% bronze or copper to make a bronze, or at least the bronze I'm looking for. Now, there's some math involved in that, but basically, uh, this chunk here is what I'm working on. I've got 4.66 or 4.67, it kind of goes back and forth between them, uh, pounds, but let's do that in grams. I prefer uh, for metric system for some of my figuring out percentages. So I've got 2,116 grams, so a little over two kilograms, uh, which makes sense with 4.66 pounds. And I went from there to figure it all out. Um, basically just wrote it all out, all out on a piece of paper. So that's my weight in grams. I need 88%. 88 out of 100 are 0.88 and then I just kind of figured from there and did some math and I came up with 288.54 repeating so 288.5 basically grams of tin that needs to be added to this piece of copper to be 12 percent tin so that's what I've got in this little cute little skillet here is well it's a little bit less it's about 284 or 285 grams of tin. So this is a previous attempt I made at this. It looks more like a dolphin or a seal than the wolf it's supposed to look like uh, but that's basically what I'm going for is I'm going to try and use this mold to make a large stamp uh, this was brass instead of bronze and it almost worked I think it might have worked better if I would have uh, heated the mold up a lot more it might have got a better surface finish without a freezing on it but I'm not positive about that I could have just had to have the brass hotter or the brass just didn't flow enough I don't know and it did break the mold when it came out so I can't reuse that I had to cut another one it's a little bit different a little bit different draft to it hopefully it works better we'll see Well, that was truly horrible. Hopefully that doesn't destroy my mold because I'm probably gonna have to do that again. Well, bad news is 
it totally stuck in the mold and broke it as I was trying to pull the metal out of it. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool enough now to touch. Yeah, it took a big chunk out of it. I think it did that because as it cooled, it pinched on either side and caught. And I just don't have enough draft for how deep this is. I'm going to mess with that some more. Like I said, I thought I had it too deep. But the good news is, is since it was deep enough, I think I've got enough of the shape that I might be able to do something with this with a ton of cleanup. But eh, I guess it's worth trying. almost looks like it would work so I think I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more off camera maybe do something with the back of it here try and level it out but otherwise I think this might actually be a successful project all right so as a quick test let's go ahead and I wet down a piece of leather and I've got you know this thing and we'll see if we'll just drop it in this press and make an impression with it attach this to a block of steel so we can weld handles onto it or fixtures or whatever somebody wants to do add some uh, durability and I'm not entirely sure people aren't going to use this as a brand as well because I'm making this for someone else I don't know exactly what their plans are but anyway I had this casting void in it and I went ahead and drilled a hole down through that and I'm going to put a screw and tap and screw, drill and tap this uh, metal plate and I'll just screw it drop down onto those I've also drilled another hole over here and I'm just going to countersink that one down a good bit so the screws are about even. And then I'll use those to mark the holes in the metal block and then get it all drilled up and drilled and tapped and put together. Alright, these screws that I found I was planning on using happened to be a metric screw, so, but luckily I have a tap for it. It's a 6 by one it's a really common one, very close to quarter by 20 just not quite. Uh, so that's going to be the one we wind up using. Now, I need to find the right drill bit, drill the holes, and then we can tap that. trick for anybody who does this stuff and doesn't already know it keep an old paintbrush around that's absolutely destroyed for wiping off uh, metal shavings and you'll have a lot less metal splinters stuck in your fingers Now in this kind of ongoing project, I'm going to go with a different metal instead of the bronze as well. I mean, the first one, the bronze kind of worked, but I could probably do a better job with it. But no, I'm also going to try uh, an alloy called Zamic. It's a zinc alloy. Um, it's actually written real there, small as Zamic 2 in this case. Um, this is basically what stamps are made out of if you buy the 2D, 3D stamps. Uh, 
alphabet set stamps from Tandy Leather and places like that. It's made out of this zinc alloy or a zinc alloy similar to this one, and it melts at a pretty low temperature. Uh, I think they're actually made by a company called Ivan in Taiwan um, for Tandy Leather and various other leather uh, companies. But the first step is, since this isn't going to fit in this little crucible, I'm going to need to try it and chop a chunk off of here somehow. We'll see how I can manage to do that. And then I've got another mold made with a lot shallower impression in it, and we'll see how that works uh, to make the next attempt at a stamp. Now, I don't know how energetic this is going to be, so I'm going to wear a face shield and gloves while I'm doing this. Uh, this works very well with lead. I don't think zinc is quite the same. <laughs> That's about what I expected to happen. Because it could catch the zinc on fire, and that can cause uh, zinc fumes, which you don't really want to breathe. Uh, so I would suggest wearing a respirator if you're going to do this. Still not sure I like how these came out. They did take a lot of detail. You can see all the marks from the graphite mold where it was milled, um, which is kind of impressive. Uh, but it kind of rounded out all the edges. It didn't fill into the corners, so I think it's going to be a little bit off on the impressions. Um, but let's see. I've got some wet leather here, and we'll put it in the press and see what it does when I squish it. Uh, I may go back and mill the mold a little bit deeper, um, see what that does to make this a little bit better, but we'll see. Some scrap, eh, it looks like four to five ounce leather here. <laughs> round it out, make the mold a little deeper so that I can then take and kind of grind it flat or face it off one of the ways um, to get sharper edges, but definitely getting closer. Well, 
we're starting again here basically. I went back and milled this a little deeper, about another millimeter deeper. And I broke up the pieces that I had, except for the best one of them. And I'm melting them down again. And we'll see if this version of the mold works better or not. Chip the part out of the mold that goes between the back legs. I can make that work. Just a little bit of work with some burrs. Now I was originally planning on cleaning this up with some uh, diamond burrs on a Dremel tool. Adding in some details that have been lost in the molds or just in general. Uh, but actually I've got this little uh, engraver that I picked up a while back and I've never really practiced enough with it. So I figured this is actually a great opportunity to get some practice in with it as this metal should be pretty easy to cut and work with. Not quite as good with it as I am with a swivel knife just yet, but they've got a very similar sort of function and feel to them as to a swivel knife. There's a lot of parallels between engraving and leatherworking, which is why I wanted to try and pick it up. The idea is to make it more look look more like a wolf howling at the moon and less like a seal or goat or rabbit thing. I don't know. But anyway. That's one of them that I've added some details to. I'm going to probably do the same thing with another. Uh, you can just draw on this with a pencil and draw in any details you want to add. Sketch them, erase them, so on and so forth, and then go back and use the gravers. Alright, well we'll see if these work for the person that asked me, Farm. I think they came out pretty good. I mean, the stamp itself looks kind of... But it makes a good impression. So... It all comes up to what you're using them for and what you're expecting. And in this case, it comes out to what you're expecting to pay because getting a stamp made like this could be very expensive. Um, well, made better than this, but a stamp this size. So I think these will make uh, the volunteer group that is asking for these happy.